Three geographical features come to my mind when you think Southwest. First, mountains. Second, deserts. And third, and this is kind of a surprising one, is forests. Now, forests are actually the one that kind of affect the weather the most down there because I think if you thought of the whole desert Southwest without any trees, it pretty much would be a year-round climate where it'd be 95 to 100 every day. Lows at night would be in the 30s and 40s. It'd be just that way. But thankfully, we have a little bit of a transition across parts of the four corners uh, geographically wise. On average, their yearly rainfall runs from as low as five inches per year to as high in some areas up to around 18, 19 inches of precipitation per year. That's pretty low compared to the rest of the country who averages anywhere from 35 to about 50 inches of precip per year. Uh, so less rainfall and all of that goes back to what's there. We talked about the rocky areas of the Southwest, uh, a lack of vegetation usually means a lack of things growing. That means there's not been rainfall in the past and there probably isn't going to be a lot of rainfall in the future. Um, as you look at the overall jet stream, and we know that weather moves from west to east, so if you look at the times of the year in the winter time, months of December, January, February, you see that jet stream going through California, going through the Rockies. But what you find is that most of the moisture falls in the mountains, falls in snow, and then that snowpack builds up and that fills reservoirs, fills the lakes, and fills rivers that eventually by summertime all trickle down to almost dry because of the summer type drought and heat. We have one rainy season per year usually in the desert southwest and that's monsoon season. And that comes around June 15th, it starts, we'll run through the end of August. And in that time of the year, we sneak in that moisture from the eastern Pacific because now the waters there are warm and they provide that moisture. When you move out of August, suddenly those waters in the East Pacific start to cool back down. Now that water doesn't transport north again, the patterns change enough, and you don't see that rainfall in the Southwest year-round. So it's all about humidity, and when it's so low, is there's just no water in the air. And I mean, if you get any kind of vegetation around you, and most of this in the Southwest, states like Arizona, New Mexico, and Colorado, you find these fires, they don't occur up in the rocky areas like in the Colorado Plateau. They don't occur in the Grand Canyon. There just isn't anything to burn there. But in these forested areas, uh, specifically the Gila National Forest, eastern Arizona, into New Mexico, uh, northern forested areas of New Mexico, and then southern Colorado, there you're talking about a lot of pine trees. And those are the ones now where you get this extreme heat, that extremely low humidity, and now that vegetation is just, it, it's starved. It, it's looking for something. You get any kind of spark just floating in the air, just like that. You know, the only real cure is to get rain, and uh, looking ahead to what's coming up in 2014, 2000 leading to 15, if we get into an El Nino-type pattern, uh, the hope is that this will be a wet El Nino for the southwest. It can build up a little bit of precipitation, but uh, even if they were to get a record all-time precip, uh, no matter what the case, you go into next spring, next summer, it still doesn't matter. Wildfires can happen in the southwest all because of that extreme temperature difference and the difference in vegetation in that part of the country.